The following program is rated E-M-A-L. Contains strong language and is intended for mature audiences. The most dangerous. Yo, 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 you are now tuned into the world's most dangerous podcast. Here we go. This is the wake up call, mother. Gang, dang, school sin. Listen. This been the, this this been the, how can I say this? The um homecoming type weeks lately. People been coming on that came on before. You know, as family, once you come to the podcast, people that never seen or been on this podcast before, once you come on, we we give a vibe that you always come. It's like a homie ass vibe. Yeah. And if we talk about people that them been on the podcast before, <laughs> let me tell you about this brother. This brother, then came first thing first. And you can peep, and it's still on the damn YouTube channel. This was the first video interview I had. Oh. I'm right in the tuck with a damn um um scarf on. He had the um Crenshaw hat on, and we in our old college um my old college fucking radio station joint. We in the back. So Max came on the first time. Max came. He he didn't even have to come to the ville that day, but he came and he we we talked and did our thing. Max, also, another video that's still on there. That's Max great. came a second time when we came back to Philly. And as you can see, it's right near Halloween time. It was dark as shit that day. Max right there, and he was spitting on that J. Cole beat. I think, what that's the fuck thing. was that? Was that Far as Hill Drive? Uh, yeah, it was one. Yeah, yeah. Now, Max back when we got the motherfucking lights that y'all can't see in the background. No homo, Max looking better than he got more lights on his ass. You know what I'm saying? No, Max back on here. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to reintroduce to you, wake up, call, listeners, visitors, and all that good shit to Max Ali. Drop a bomb one time for <laughs> Max, welcome back to the world's most dangerous podcast, my brother. I appreciate you, bro. Max, I just want to tell you. I appreciate you always coming through. You don't see this shit on the bottom. And mind you, this shit ain't the this ain't the motherfucking or let's say the pinnacle or whatever the right. fuck you want to call. This, Matt's gonna be on here when this shit gets nationally wide. That's a fact. Matt's gonna be right the fuck there. My Matt's remember this, remember this shit. And yeah. And the love is mutual, bro. Appreciate you, Max. Sure. Appreciate you. Let me tell you about um, how my, Max, my guy. One time, me and Max, cause we don't we don't live that far from each other. <laughs> me and Max seen each other, and Max, I said, "Yo, when you dropping some shit?" Max said, "Bro, I'm done." I said, "Damn, bro, I think I am too." <laughs> and Max said, "The fuck you mean you done?" And I was like, "The fuck you mean you done?" <laughs> and Max said, "No, nah, bro, you gotta keep going." I said, "All right." You gotta, gotta keep, keep going. going. <laughs> Max said, "All right, bro. All right, we gathered up. I parked my car. Max went home. We had a good, we we went on. Max hit me back up and said, bro, 'Bro, I'm back.' I said, "Damn, me too.' Me too. So, so me and Max, we, sometimes motherfuckers, us creative ass mind motherfuckers, gotta sit down for, for a minute. Yeah. We gotta take a um, I can't think of the words right now. Fuck it, um, what's the shit with the beers? Go to sleep and shit with the fuck. Oh, hibernate. Hibernate. We gotta yeah. hibernate real yeah. quick and shit." And but we back, Max. Where the fuck you been? Um, I mean, I just been in the world. You know what I'm saying. Uh, I ain't been doing music, but now that I'm back doing music, I mean, other than that, like I was painting, I was doing TV, film stuff. Um, you, you, I was writing for other people. You was painting. Yeah, I was painting. You gotta talk about that because like, I th- and I just told Max off camera. Max is, and I'm not lying on this, <laughs> and y'all about to see why. Even though Max got bars for bars board than the goddamn um. What's the damn shit called? Damn New Orleans, Bourbon Street shit. He got more bars than that. Mm, I see that. Max is really, and like, like he's he not he more than a rapper, but I always say Max is the smartest fucking rapper I know in this world. He, him and Nip, they they will Nip go on recipes to Nip, but sure. he give me Nip vibes like a motherfucker. I appreciate like, that. But Max, you got to tell him, you, you was painting? Yeah, so, I mean, I always could paint since I was young, but mm-hmm. I would never really tap into it. So like once I started recording, like I once I saw you, we talked. I was yeah. like, you know what? Like I had a couple songs I want to drop, and then I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna record an album. I'm gonna just put out an album, right? And as I was recording the album, I would hear the sounds and stuff. And like with me, like the way my brain works is like when I hear sounds and music, I hear colors, right? So I could start seeing color combinations and stuff. And I'm like, damn, like you can see colors. Yeah. So you got yeah you got you could, if you play a song, I could close my eyes and be like, that's yellow, that's blue, what? that's purple. 
Like, I could tell you, like, that guitar that's playing. Like, we got Marvin Gaye, I Want You album, the yeah. first song on I Want You. Yeah. Like, the guitar on that is, like, like a reddish pink to me. Like, I, like, I literally yeah. listened to that album the past, like, three weeks. I've been binging that album. That's my shit. Mm. And you're going to find so many samples on there. But I just hear music in colors. So, for me, it became a thing of, like, all right, like, how do I get these colors out of my head now, right? Because yeah, you're making yeah, music, yeah, you want to yeah, get the yeah. thoughts, the rhymes, the bar you came up with, the flow. But then I'm like, damn, like, how I get these colors out of my head, right? Yeah. So I was like, let me start painting that shit, like. Mm. And once I start painting, it just start pouring out. So I did, like, a bunch 40, of little canvas. A yeah, bunch of canvases, a bunch yeah. of canvases, a bunch of paint, a bunch of paint brushes, a bunch of tools, and just in my living room. Three weeks straight, I painted probably, like, 45, 50 paintings. Yo! Yeah. That's fucking crazy, bro. I'm gonna lie to you. I'm, I'm not going. I'm not. I'm gonna say I'm not going to lie to you. I'm about to say I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I can't pay for shit. I ain't gonna lie. Me and the art teacher back in the day. <laughs> thank God I don't teach art. We used to go at it because yeah. I ain't. I, I never been like an artist at all. This is the most art. <laughs> this platform. If y'all ain't know, I made that fucking logo. That's the best art shit I ever had. But yeah, I'm not. So applaud you, bro. Cause I, I ain't never like. How, like I'm mean, asking about painting. Right. Is that shit in my help me help me out again with these words? Cause I'm, I suck ass at pronouncing it. Is that shit therape therapeutical? Is that the uh, word? Therapeutic. Therapeutic. Yeah, there we sure. go. Therapeutic. Um. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely therapeutic. It sounds therapeutic. Yeah. I think like it depends like what energy you going into it with. You know, some people like like a lot of like famous painters, right? So like names we hear Picasso, Basquiat, blah blah. blah yeah. Right? Yeah. In the painting world, they'll separate by like collections, right? Mm -hmm. So like um. If you ever heard of like Mark Rock, Mark Rothko, mm -hmm. he's a famous painter, right? He's okay. paying himself for forty, fifty million dollars. Damn! Now. But he wound up killing himself in his art gallery. Oh. So like a lot of his paintings, the color palettes he used, the techniques he used during painting, they were saying like, oh, you could see he was suicidal, like through the painting. So mm. it's used to like express feeling, express thought, yeah. just expression. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of ways you could take it. Some people do it for therapy. Some people do it because they just got an idea. You know, some people, they live through it and they like, yo, you can see the way I use this blue with this technique. I'm telling you a story. Yeah. You know what I'm so that's like the, the painting world. So in your case, what did, was that? More therapeutic? Ther did I say therapeutic. The right? Therapeutic. Yeah. Was, in your case, was that or it was just like, I need to get these damn Jones out my head. Let me do my both. Thing. Both. You know, it was therapeutic because it. Was, I, I feel like because I always could paint, I just never did. Mm. So it was getting that out and seeing like what type of energy that worked in my brain and what type of vessel that worked in my brain and be like, damn, I feel like this now that I painted all of this. Yeah. So like when you walk in my crib now, my paintings hanging up everywhere. That's you know what lit. I'm saying? So like. The funny thing is, like, my apartment still looked the same to me, but when other people walk in, they like, yo, these paintings look totally different in an apartment now. Like, this look crazy. It's like an art museum. I was about to say, yeah, like, your, your apartment. It's just my house. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's just, like, some shit that didn't exist until I made it. So mm -hmm. it doesn't strike me that way, but I love when people have that, like, aspect or uh, perspective that they share with me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'd be like, damn, it really feel like an art gallery in here. All right, cool. I was getting ready to ask you, too. Do you go to art um, exhibits? Yeah, I go to art museums all the time. Yeah. Um, I just took my brothers to the Basquiat Museum in Brooklyn. There's a Basquiat Museum? Yeah, so you can family. see how ignorant I am to this shit because I yeah, ain't know you that could. shit. Yeah, That's yeah. what we here for. Right, right. Wait, wait, wait. See, I'm not the y'all not the only ones that need to be woken up. My ass need to be woken up sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, his family put together like 200 of like his unseen paintings and unsold paintings and stuff because you know his paintings sell for millions yeah, of dollars yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they still had like some of his collection and they like recreated his art, uh, his art gallery that he would paint in and stuff like that. And it's like an exhibit you walk through. It's it's yeah, it's fire. Damn. Yeah. I'm gonna go to that now. Yeah, you is definitely. It Brooklyn, it's in Brooklyn. You said? It's in Brooklyn. I gotta go to that shit. Yeah. Who is um, do you, who is like one of your favorite paintings ever? That Basquiat. Yeah, I mean painters. Painters. Um, some of my favorite painters ever. That's a really good question. Um, I mean I like all the famous people. You know Basquiat, Picasso, because they more so style particular so yeah. like you're not gonna find something that looked like Basquiat at that time Picasso created like cubism so you don't see people paint with that technique where yeah, it's like yeah. oh shit how do you can see it but you can't see it kind of thing um but I really like um I really like Vincent Van Gogh I went to one of his like exhibits where mm. like it's like a uh uh AV uh what is it um 
uh, AI experience yeah, yeah, where you put yeah. the goggles on, oh. and it relives his childhood. So you see him through walking out his house, and they, yeah, AI. and it recreate oh. the paintings through his neighborhood and all of that. Oh, and it's like, lit. oh my goodness! And the crazy thing about Vincent Van Gogh, his he got like the most expensive painting ever sold, like eighty five or hundred million dollars, something crazy like that. What the fuck During his life, he sold one painting. That's crazy. He good. And no, he didn't even make no money off it. He died oh. poor. Yeah, that's the crazy part. He sold one painting in his life, and it was just like the equivalent to fifty dollars today. And so, the, like died. the boy that that made the Nike um, exactly. Oh, and man. when he died, people started to see the amazingness of his painting. So the thing that his uh, exhibit brought to me that I thought was crazy: people try to recreate like his painting techniques and how he used color palettes. Yeah. He was colorblind. So a part of it was he was trying to guess what colors look like what next to each other. Yeah. So they got a thing where they show you what the paint looked like and then they showed you what it would have looked like to him. Mm. And it looked super dull to him. So he don't realize he's using pink and match, match, matching that with yellow and blue and yeah. red. But when you see it, you like, yo, how is somebody painting this? And it's because he don't really know any better. Yeah. So it's just like that's what art represents. Just like the pureness of something. Like somebody that's colorblind using colors is one of the greatest paint, painters ever. That's some wild shit. This is why I love Max coming on the podcast, dog. It's like, it's like, y'all gotta understand, like, every time Max come on, it's like a different layer of new shit that y'all get woken up to. The first time it was talking about rap. The other time it was talking about business. We about to talk about that a little bit more. This time it's talking about painting. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't never talking about the motherfucking art on my damn podcast before. (laughs) This this shit exactly is a first for everything. So you say you got these paintings on your website. Yeah. That's, let me ask more about that. Right. Can you please tell the listeners and the listeners and all whoever listening and watching? I call it listeners because combined my little dumb ass word. But um, like um, why it's so important as an entrepreneur to have a website? Not like as in like I'm a only post shit on Instagram. Right. Why is it so important to have their own website and invest into a website? Right. I mean. Because you got one. I don't know a lot of motherfuckers ain't got one. Yeah. I ain't got one. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I think because it's yours, right? So you pay for the domain, and I think, like, it locks in you. So my website is blackisart.com, right? Yeah, say it again for the people that yeah, get here. blackisart.com. Thank blackisart.com. You, com, right? And that's mine. Yeah. Right? So the name of my business is Black Art. That's mine. Right, right. So before I had a business, nobody ever called what they did Black Art. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Nobody said Black is Art. Yeah. So... That's the main thing, like, your claim, you know what I mean? This is yeah. mine, and this is how I'm producing it. This is what we're going to call it. From there, that's the only place you could come and be in my world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anything you click on, I did it, I designed I designed my website. So everything is there is from my brain. So you in my world, you in my brain when you're on the website. You want to buy something that came from my brain. You want help, you know, financial education. That's my brain giving you information. Yeah. The paintings is what I made. The music is what I wrote. So it's all coming from me. See, that's crazy. In house shit. And that's that in house shit right there. But you don't put me onto a new word today. What right. was the what was the new word we were talking right. about? Right, vertical integration. Vertical in- integration. I might right. yeah. That y'all see that vertical integration. This shit should pop up right now if y'all see yes. blind ass motherfuckers. <laughs> but um that's amazing. So that's basically like everything that you made that's in house, basically. In other words, like basically, like right. this is my painting. This is my website. This right. is my university. Right. This is my music. Right. Everything is me. Right. You can't say I went to somebody else and did that shit. Right. Somebody else did that. It's right. all me. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. that's amazing. Let's go. Let's go to one of your things um, that you that you made your university. Right. Black I ain't gonna university. lie. A lot of motherfuckers ain't got no damn universities. How the hell you got one and explain what it is? Yeah. So. <clears throat> So Black Art University named my business is Black Art, right? Yeah. And I think about it like a lot of times when we when we want information, we want certifications, we want degrees, we want to feel like we did something, we go to like these white universities, right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. the biggest HBCU, as much as we talk about like HBCUs in the world, right? The biggest HBCU, the uh, biggest HBCU is Howard, right? That's yeah. the most notable one. Uh huh. And Spelman and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. But like just say Howard is the one, the mm-hmm, first the one, right? Yeah, think Howard named after a white man. Really. Niggas don't even know that. I ain't know that. Drop a bomb one time. I ain't know that shit. Howard named after a white man. So as much as we talk about donating money and we got to get people to go there, how about we rename that shit first? Facts. You know what I'm saying? Call that shit Malcolm X University. Call that shit Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks University. Call that shit, you know, whoever university. I'm down with the Malcolm. The biggest black thing is still called by a white man's name. That's anything. In 2022. So I was like, fuck trying to get a degree from there. Like, 
I've been in a world and you can't tell me academic education is better than life education. No, nah, so I've been in the world. I've been experienced it. I know what it's like to go through it and have to learn from it because I had to go through it and take the scars and take the bumps. To yeah. be like, oh, this is the correct way to do it. So how about niggas come to my school and get an education? Because I guarantee you what you're going to pay is going to be way less at my school because right. they're going to leave you in student loan debt. They're going to take all your money. They're yeah. going to fuck you up financially where I'm trying to teach you to finance. Mm. So the Black Art University is credit. You know what I'm saying? Teach you how to fix, build, leverage your credit. It is real estate. Teach you how to buy your first crib. If you want to buy rental properties, how you do that. Business and taxes, how to start a business, the tax benefits that come from yeah, it. Yeah. Investing in the market. So how you make need. your money, make money for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So those four things... Once you learn it, you know what I'm saying? Finance is just a language. Mm-hmm. So you hear somebody speaking Spanish, your brain just automatically, I don't know what they're talking about. Right, 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 right. I just told the audio people that he was talking shit. I said, you talking Chinese to me. Yeah, facts. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, but once you learn finance, you can't not understand it. So vertical integration is just a finance term because that's right. how finance companies work. We want to manufacture it, then we want to give it, then we want to take it to where we actually going to get it made depending on the product. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Apple, biggest company in the world, they got manufacturing plants that people work there on some sweatshop type shit where yeah. they put everything together. And then they're going to send those phones out to Apple at Cupertino. Cupertino going to come up with the designs and all that because Apple paid the designers, all of that. Right, right, cool. Right. From there, then we're going to send it to the people in our Apple stores. Mm. So that's vertical integration. From the time it was made to the time you got it, yeah. it's all through Apple and you paying for that product. Right. So why do the phones cost $1,000 a pop? Because we got to pay the retail workers. We got to pay the corporate workers. Yeah. We got to pay the engineers. We got to pay the designers. We got to pay the manufacturers. We got to pay the taxes on that. So that's vertical integration. So by the time they get to you, it's a completed project. And it's a thousand dollars a pop. Yo, Max, that's woke y'all motherfuckers up without even rapping yet. <laughs> See, I drop a bomb on Max with these gems right now. I'll take it. Yo, this shit is crazy. This shit is really crazy. So that was similar. I might now I might get in trouble. Fuck it. This is the wake up call. Rose most dangerous yeah, podcast. Is that the shit Kanye was trying to say? Yeah, in a way, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I think the the interesting thing is like, and like in finance, they'll say like stocks go through correction. So that's what a recession is, yeah. a correction, right? Shit was so high that it got to level down, right? Yeah. So to me, Kanye going through like a personal correction, right? Because he made the billions of dollars, but he realized, in my opinion, what he did to get the billion dollars wasn't worth mm-hmm. his image, his spirit, what he believe in, right? And to me, him going through... 10 years ago when Yeezus came out, everybody yeah. said the album was ass. It was corny. It was his worst I ain't gonna, album. I was one of them motherfuckers cool. that said that shit. 10 years later, people like, nah, that's a cult classic. He really was on some shit on that. Yeah. And at that time, as he doing all the interviews, he go to the breakfast club and he talking about sneakers and he talking about being a billionaire and he talking about designing clothes and how racist it is. And everybody like, Kanye crazy, Kanye off his meds. Go back and watch that. Yeah. He didn't miss. He was saying exactly, listen... I'm black and they won't let me in. Yeah. Why won't they let me in when I just designed the best sneakers ever? Why yeah. don't they let me get another sneaker? Why they won't let me design all the sneakers? Why they won't let me do fashion when every time I drop my own stuff, it sell out? Right. When I do collaborations, right. it sell out. So as he get into that door, now you see the whole fashion world. You never seen, 10 years ago, it wasn't no rappers with sneakers. It wasn't no rappers with collaborations with McDonald's and brands like that. Right, right, That's right. Kanye contribution because he opened the door and now Travis Scott got the biggest Nike collaboration and Pharrell with Adidas. And Pharrell was already doing stuff before Kanye, but Kanye did Yeezys and they became the biggest sneakers in the world. A lot of people don't know, Pusha T wrote the ba-ba-ba-ba-ba line. McDonald's. Yeah. Exactly. So in that, what he wound up realizing as he get into music and get to the highest level, get into sneakers and get to the highest level, get into fashion and get into the highest level, then you get to a billionaire status and financially that's the highest level. What he's saying is Jewish people got vertical integration on all mm-hmm. this. And the way they use it, one, we should do that. We should follow that as black people, but they also take advantage of us for not knowing as black people, and that's not fair. Right. That's what he's saying. Yeah. But he coming across in a way that, like, you can't be a strong, young, black, masculine man with all your ducks in a row, and they can't take nothing from you, and you think you're just going to say shit about us when we the power strike? Oh, no, we'll shut all that shit down. Right. And that's so what- exactly what they did was his point. They so powerful. Y'all got people with drug money in the banks, and I just said Jewish people own everything, and y'all shut my bank account down. Mm. How you shut my bank account down with my money? Right, right, you know what I'm saying? right. Because right. they own it. Yeah. So that's vertical integration. They own everything that black people want to do. We want to be music uh, musicians. We want to play basketball. We want to go into media, do podcasts. Jewish people don't own all that. Right. That's not a shot. That's not anti-Semitic. It's just factual information. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So to me, I think Kanye's real point is that he wants to study under Jewish people 
without having to feel like he can't be black while doing it. Right. Like, yo, can you teach us how we could do this? That's the real sentiment that black people feel. Like, yo, y'all got the game. Y'all mastered the game. Can y'all teach this to us? Because we come from similar backgrounds, similar experiences. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the way he says it is very rapper. It's very black. It's very right in your face. Right there, like that fucking Hitler line and shit like that. Right. Like crazy. Was yeah, anyone so yeah. that's his own thing. You know, right. I won't get too much into that. <laughs> right. But in general, I think the, the message he had, even when you relate Kyrie to it, is like at a certain point, we can't just we can't act like it's it's wrong to say what's true. Yeah. Now that don't mean what's true got to be attacking somebody. But if I say you got a white socks hat on, you shouldn't say Max get off my show. You canceled. Right. You right. Know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So right. it should be like that in the world. And I think as a black person, you always as a black man especially, you always got to speak truth to power and power to truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's designed for you to fail, for you to be on the bottom, for you to never have it. So. The only way you going to get it is by disrupting what they got going on, mm -hmm. which they going to say is something wrong with you for that because you messing up their thing. Exactly. So By waking them the fuck up. There you go. Exactly. So, Max, see, this is why I'm glad you back, bro, because people need to hear that shit because your music, bro, a lot of people relate to that shit if you didn't yeah. know. I appreciate and it. People relate to it. like me when I listen to your music, bro. I feel like I'm back in the '90s with the beats, but I actually I'm in the I'm in like a it's kind of weird, bro. I'm like I'm like a fuck. It feel like I'm in a blend. I feel like I'm blending vanilla and caramel at my motherfucking Starbucks <laughs> cup. So like, I feel like I'm in the '90s with your beats, but I'm your lyrics is 2022 shit. Excuse me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you cool, you cool. But like, and I like that shit. Like, bro, I could really rock out to your music, but I'm also relating to your music and listening to it. It's getting me inspired. Also on a cool, relaxed kind. Like a lot of people want to hear, like the bars you got. They were like, oh, let's go, niggas. Like, it's like that. <laughs> but your joint is like, yeah, yeah, let me learn some more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how, and that, that matches your personality, bro. Like, you just a, you're a cool brother that's outspoken. Right. And a lot of people, like Kanye ass, who is outspoken, and me too, when we outspoken, we loud as fuck. Right. You that calm. And, that, and that's what people need. Like, you, a lot of loud shit people don't hear. And I'm trying to fix myself with that. A lot of loud shit people don't hear. But when you say calm and cool, you're like, damn. Okay. Right. Okay, because like Wally always said, loud niggas in the room is usually the brokers. So, like, <laughs> you guys, like, I, that's why I love your music. That's why we love your music as us, your fans and whatnot. And the shit you say, bro, you speak in game with great ass music you somebody you produced your shit before too yeah now how was that process yeah so i mean like i know you do produce your up and coming album mm -hmm. which what day it drops by the way they need to know this shit my birthday january 1st the uh first fucking yep. day of the year first day of the year that's fucking nuts yeah that is fucking nuts and what's your new album gonna call? uh new album is called fool's wisdom fool's um, wisdom yeah and I'll, I'll make that make sense for you um but yeah i mean so i i was struggling with a title for a minute. I had the songs, all of that, concepts, and I was like, damn, what do I want to call it? Like, what do I want to call this space that I'm in when I made it, right? And I was watching a show, and on the show, they made a reference to, like, um, it was like, oh, no, don't listen to that person. They're a fool. Hmm. And a lady responded. She was like, but what if his Lear is fool, right? And she what is his what? Lear is fool, like King Lear from Shakespeare. Oh, okay. Right? And I was like, damn, like, I never read that in high school, but I knew, when, I knew what she was talking about. I just wasn't familiar with the story, so yeah. I went to the story. And basically... King Lear, back at that time, royalty would have, like, their fools, right? That's, like, their little sidekicks or, like, their little secretaries, right? Yeah. And the fool would live with the common people because they wasn't royalty, right? Yeah. But the fool's job was to entertain the king. So what fools would do is entertain the king by telling the king what's going on with the common people so the king could make decisions, things like that, right? So the fool would have to have a talent. So the fool would tell jokes, would sing, make music, dance, yeah, things yeah. like that, right? And when you think about it now, what do black people do to get their message out? We mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle tell jokes, Jay Z, Kanye going to rap. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So we had to use the art to get our message out across to the people that was making the decisions and telling what we going through, right? right. And and King Lear basically um, the story he had his kingdom. He was going to leave it to his daughters, whoever loved them the most. And he had three daughters. The first two daughters lied and said they love him more than anything. They didn't really love him, though. The third daughter, who actually loved him more than anything, said, I love you as much as a daughter could love a dad. And he mm. said, that's not enough. Mm. So I'm leaving it to them, too. 
And when they got it, the two daughters wanted to take over and kill him because they didn't like him. Yeah. So when the fool wound up hearing about it, the fool wound up dancing and telling them a riddle about how his daughters were trying to kill him and take it over. Yeah. And he didn't listen. So what he did is banish the fool. You got to get away. Don't come around here no more. Right? Right, right, right. And when he banishes the fool in the story, he goes blind. The wait, wait. Who goes blind? The King fool? Lear. Oh, okay, okay. When King Lear tells the fool, "Don't come back," he goes blind. Now he can't see anything, and it's a metaphor for the fool was your all seeing. That the fool and what the fool told him was that your daughters was going to take the kingdom and try to kill the you. Fool was trying to warn him. The fool's wisdom. Bro, shit, drop a bomb one time. <laughs> He's a deep ass. <laughs> so that was the that was the fool's wisdom. All right. So listen. Fool Wisdom come out when again? January 1st. We gave a lot of game today. You gave a lot of game. January yes, 1st. Yes, sir. First day of the year. So y'all motherfuckers. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to curse this much. Y'all mother freakers. Nah, fuck that. Motherfuckers can listen to it on New Day. Because mind you, on a news day, New Day, January 1st, y'all going to be already hungover. Y'all ain't got nothing else to do. Lean back. Listen to Max stuff. He's going to give you game with an ill ass beat. Yeah. That Max done produced. He done wrote it, he done wrapped it, and you get it all on his website. And yeah. it'll be all, on all streaming services too. All stream services. Yep. He done did everything because of the word of the day is what a good man. Vertical integration. Exactly. Yeah. See? That's why we woke y'all up. The most dangerous.